How cool is it we took a live edge piece of white oak and made a live edge sign out of it with live edge on it? How you doing? I'm Matt with 731bullbarks.com. Today, we're building a custom live edge sign. You'll be seeing this sign behind us on the new show, Live Edge, every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Central Time, right here on YouTube. We hope you'll join us. So we took this white oak live edge slab. We ordered these custom letters from Carpenter Farmhouse on Etsy. We're not associated with them, but they do good work, and we've ordered several lettering items from them. This font is called Waverly. It looks really cool. Let me show you how we put this thing together. So I bought these live edge slabs, I bought nine of them. They're 13, 14 feet long, 17 or 18 inches wide, but about an inch and a half thick. The only problem is they have a lot of cup and bows and stuff like that in them. We're gonna make a live edge sign, as you saw. And so the first thing I wanna do, I wanna be able to run this through my planer and keep it at about 12, 12 and a half inches wide. So the first thing I do, I'm gonna take this live edge bark off and then we're gonna start working it down to get it nice flat and workable so that we can put those live edge letters on there. I'm gonna go ahead and take this bark off this edge. It should come off fairly easy. That should be plenty. We're only taking three foot off this edge here and then we're gonna leave the rest for something else later. I'm gonna take my circular saw, cut this across to make it more manageable. So I know I want at least three foot, so I'm gonna cut it a little long at 40 inches and go from there. Not really looking for square here. I'm trying to get it in a manageable size. Stuck. Get it bound up in there. Just want to take off this excess bark. So this thing is terribly bowed, twisted, cupped. I mean, you name it, this thing's got it going on. I'm gonna keep one side that's the most live edgiest and then we'll rip the other side flat. And the reason I'm doing that, I needed to go through the planer at 13 inches. The 13 inch width is as wide as I can go. This thing is right at 13 inches right here, 14. So it gets wider as it goes down. I hate to lose that wide edge, one of them. I don't know any other way of getting it flat. I don't have a flattening sled. If I had one of those with a router, That'd probably be ideal, but for the most part, we just want one live edge for the live edge sign. Let's do it. So I've got a piece of plywood. This is three quarter inch plywood. It's got a little strip nailed on the end there. It's my flattening sled from a planer. It's not rocket science. And uh, we're not building a clock here. We're building a wall sign. So basically, I'm gonna put this on here. It's got, this thing is awfully twisted. I'm gonna shim this up on each side with some little pieces of wood and get everything nice and stable before we start running through the planer. Basically, all I'm trying to do is make this side flat. And then once this side is flat, or as flat as I can get it, I can flip that over and run this side on the planer bed down with this other side up. I expect this to be significantly, significantly, thinner when I'm done with it because of what I'm making with it. I want it to be flat so it sits flat against the wall. I also want the other side to be flat so that the live edge letters will be flat against the board. Let's try it. Worst case scenario, we're making firewood. I've got it fairly well shimmed up. The main thing is you want to make sure nothing's rocking and moving. There's not, jar George, there's not large gaps underneath it so that when the planer Rollers are pushing down on it, it doesn't flex. Especially something as thick as this won't flex that much, but the thinner you go, the more flex you're gonna get. You just wanna make sure everything's nice and stable before you start running through the planer. Uh, I've got this board that is nailed on the end here that keeps everything from uh, moving when it starts going through the planer. 
We'll start on the number two setting. That's the more coarse cut. Once we get to our final uh, thickness on both sides, we'll do the number one setting makes everything nice and smooth. So I run it through there about, I don't know, about 20 times or so. It was a lot. So we're going to see how this worked out. If it's close, I'll be happy. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. Flat. Look how you do it out there. See, I just use these shims here. Just shims on this sled. Got her flat as it can be. Man, that worked out well. A couple passes on this top side, we'll have it flattened out. We'll be ready to start making our side. So we milled this thing down from about an inch and a half thick, maybe a little over an inch and a half. And now it's about five eighths of an inch thick before we can get it flat. That's how bowed that thing was how many twists and everything like that. Is it perfectly flat? No, but we're not making a cutting board. We're not making a clock. It don't have to be that precise. It is flat enough for a wall sign. It's, it's really, really flat. It's not perfect. There's about yay much difference and it's probably because of my shimming. If I'd have took a little more time and shimmed it up a little better, I could have got it a lot more flat. But I mean, it's really close. Now I'm gonna make it 36 inches long because that's how long we want our sign. I gotta consult with the boss, see which side she wants cut. Hi, right, Barbara, can you come out here? I just need your opinion, your expertise. So which end do you want cut off? Okay, cut this end, mm -hmm. baby. So she likes to look, the grain pattern and everything on that end. I'm gonna cut this end off at 36 inches. I'm not looking for perfection here. It's just gonna be a rough estimate. One thing I do like about this Delta is that light line. It is so convenient. I didn't realize how much convenient that would be. And I use it all the time now. Save that for something else. I wanna sand this down about 120 grit. I'm gonna use these bench cookies. I've got a video on those. If you wanna go check that out, I'll put it in the description below. Keeps that stock up off your work table and it keeps anything from moving while you're working on it. I'm gonna sand this 120 grit then we'll be ready to start putting letters on. So we're going to try to glue on these letters with Type Bond 2. Now we ordered these letters off of Etsy. I'll drop a link in the description below to the store that you can buy them from. They do different fonts, different. They can do any letter, symbols, right? Symbols. Various letters and symbols in different fonts. You can go check them out. We've ordered several items from them. They always ship fast. They always do well. They don't know us. We don't know them. We just order from them. Go check them out. We're going to try to glue this on there. Uh, Miss 731 is. So now we're just gonna put the finishing touches on. I'm using this Odie's Oil. I'll drop a link in the description below if you're interested in checking this out. 
I use that on my mallet build video. If you haven't seen that, you can go check it out. This stuff is really nice. It really brings out the natural wood grain of the wood that you're using. It's just a nice natural finish. Put it on there about 45 minutes and then wipe it off. Don't leave it on more than 45. They say it's hard to get off after that. This stuff's really nice. It's got a good citrusy smell to it. I actually like the smell of this. And then we'll wipe it on real fairly generous. And uh, the only thing that concerns me is getting around in the nooks and crannies. I'm probably just gonna use a Q-tip, kind of get in there. We'll let it set 45 minutes, then we'll buff it off and then we'll put some D-ring hangers on the back and we'll be ready to hang this dude up. My only concern is I hope that we put enough wood glue on these letters to hold them on. If not, they're fixing to come off when we start oiling because we'll be bumping them around and stuff. If you're not able to join us live on Live Edges, the show's always available right here on YouTube for replay. We're also on most all podcast distributors, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, those kind of things. Just look for Live Edge with 731 Woolworths. Or we'll drop a link in the description below to the podcast. If you're not a channel member and you would consider doing that, there's a join button right below the desktop here. If you're on mobile, there's a link in the description. Ah, there's a link in the description. Hitting that join button supports this channel directly. It, and we greatly appreciate that. Being a channel member gets you access to cool perks like discounts, behind the scenes footage. You also get some custom emojis and icons by your name when you comment or if you participate in the live chat. So we hope you will consider supporting this channel. Hey, thank you for watching. If you click that box right there, it takes you to the next set of videos. If you click that box, you're getting that big old virtual fist pump. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, we greatly appreciate it. If you hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, share it on your social media. We appreciate all that you do for us. Thank you for the support.